Today's video is going to be about camera control, which I'm surprised they haven't made a long form video about yet. Uh, I've got a short from back in Splatoon 2 about this, but otherwise there's really nothing else about it on the channel. Um, so if, you, if you've been around and you've seen that short, like, yeah, there is some information at the beginning of this that's going to repeat from that, but uh, trust me, there is going to be some new stuff, so stick around for... for... Okay, there, that's way better. So, let's talk first about reticle placement. With the reticle, there is definitely a, a good place to put it in most cases, which is straight out in front of you. Um, reason being, uh, there are a number of factors that go into it. One of them is that if you are aiming down, your shots are not going to go anywhere. And actually, same thing if you're aiming up. Uh, unlike in, you know, normal real life, the optimal angle to fire for distance is not 45 degrees. It is actually just dead ahead. Your shots will go further in Splatoon if you are aiming straight in front of you. Uh, and especially not if you're aiming straight up. Um, that you want to avoid as well. So, you're more likely to get max range, which means max paint coverage, and also just, you know, effective weapon range for hitting things, if you keep your weapon at eye level. Another reason is that uh, your targets are all going to be at eye level. So, if you can just keep your reticle at eye level the whole time, as soon as you spot something that is threatening you, you're already aiming in the right place to hit it. It's just right there at eye level in the same place every time. Obviously, there are times where you will have to aim up at things. But even then, afterwards, you can see that I just naturally returned my aim to eye level. Because that's where it's most useful to be most of the time. And that's where you habitually want to be looking. So, that's something to work on mechanically. Um... One other reason, though, and the reason that we're really most interested in it for the sake of this video, is vision. The amount of information that I have about this room right now is determined by where I'm aiming my camera. Right now, I can see, well, let's see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and, uh, okay, only when I was looking to the right, so we'll, we'll say 14 dummies. How many can I see now? What about now? You get my point. The further down you start to aim, the more this cuts off your peripheral vision. This dummy is just about in range of me with a lot of different weapons in the game. But if I look down, I can't see it. And this is something that's, you know, if you find yourself with your camera starting to creep down like this, make sure that you're recognizing that and correcting it because you're just not gonna see people moving toward you now Jim, you might ask what happens if i'm being attacked my feet are getting painted and i need to paint my feet before i can get out of there don't i have to aim straight down at the ground to be able to do that to get that speck of paint at my feet before i move ahead this is true however you only have to be aiming down for the amount of time that it takes to fire that one shot what i tend to do even if i have to do this over and over again is immediately rock my camera back up after I've gone and done that. Uh, this might not be super pleasant for those of you who experience motion sickness, um, so you may just want to listen to this next part of the video if you, you, you know, once you get the idea. Um, I do apologize, and it, it's unfortunately not the most accessible technique to everybody, um, but hopefully those of you who can stomach it are able to get some use out of it. Um, and maybe it's better for you to do while you're trying to play than it is to watch me do, because you know exactly where it's about to move and what you're trying to collect information from. So try it out anyway, just to see, you know, even if you can't watch me do it, if it works for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock the camera up every time I'm putting a dot of paint down. And that way... For at least, you know, a split second, enough time to determine what information is coming next. I can see everything that I need to. You can even, you know, if you start to get comfortable with this, kind of retreat and be looking sideways at something while you're doing that. 
kind of looking over your shoulder and still moving about as fast. So this is something that if you want to be able to get that extra information while you're leaving and not just kind of stick your face to the ground and pray, that is the kind of mechanical technique that you're going to be trying to learn. And so that's something that you could maybe practice in the lobby. Maybe just say, that dummy out in the distance, I want to know where that dummy is. And so as you're doing this, you're just keeping your eye on that dummy while you move around and trying to do that as smoothly as you can. Definitely much better for the sake of collecting information to have the camera at eye level because that will center it so that you're collecting the most information and it has all of that combat utility as well. Now, there's an extension of this that I want to talk about that kind of ties into defensive painting, which I've also made a video about in the past, and I'll uh, link in the video if I remember to go and put the video card in. Let's say I am a frontline weapon, and I am interested in pushing into the enemy court. So I'm interested in dropping down into this area because this is where the objective is, and we want to control that area in order to be able to control the objective. Well, if I'm approaching it from this direction, this is a really weak camera angle for me to have. Half of the screen right now, or maybe like a third of the screen, is taken up by this stuff out here. You know, this set decoration, this big wall out here, by like the happy jumping construction workers. That has no bearing whatsoever on my safety. Yes, they're cute. However, if I am looking in this direction, and there is a blaster looking at me from this direction. I'm going to look at this guy first. You know, maybe, maybe splat the enemy team and then take in the scenery a little bit, you know? So, we don't need all of that information on the right-hand side. That is not what helps keep us safe. What we need is to see the places on the map that we are being threatened from. So, where is that? Well, that's somewhere where the opponent is likely to come from. If we came out from the right... It's likely that the opponents came out from their right side, which is over there. So that's one thing to watch out for. Another one on this map is these grates right here. Uh, these grates are a very common backline position. If you've got a charger or a, a hydra or something like that, they're probably going to be up there at the very beginning of the game. You're also worried about someone coming up from this left side here. Someone coming maybe from this grating. If the enemy team rolls out on the right but decides not to go all the way into mid, one of the first things they're going to think to do is to go across this bridge and show up on this side. So you want to watch out to see if they're coming from over there. And one of the crazier things that can happen is somebody decides to roll out, goes all the way around here after maybe splatting a teammate of yours. And these bridges are normally going to be down, but of course they rose up for the sake of my... Uh, my demonstration here, they might go across this bridge to get over to the side where you are here. That's a lot of different things that you're worried about. So if we're walking in this direction, what we want to really see is something like this. Because now I can see this left-hand side, I can see mid, I can see the grates, and while I can't see what's down here, there is exactly one way that they are going to get there, and that is coming from over here. And if you're watching over here, you're going to see them as they arrive. So as you're walking this way, all you need to be able to see is up to about this corner right here. And then you'd be able to see all of this stuff. And then if someone were to go to the right-hand side... From about here, you'd be able to see that. Yes, they can, you know, do the sneaky little trick where they make this jump and show up right here. That's theoretically possible. But you'd probably see that coming because you would see them coming through their court here on their way to make that jump. <clears throat> so, you don't need to have your camera straight ahead. Yes, this is the direction you're eventually going to go, but everything that threatens you is over in this direction instead. So as I'm starting to approach this area here, I'm turning my camera like this, and the whole way across, I'm seeing everything that's dangerous to me. 
And as soon as any one of these things is actually in range and threatening me directly, then yes, I'm going to turn and shoot it, you know? If all of a sudden a splatling jumps out from, my, from behind this corner over here or something, and I'm like, ah, well, I probably die, but I'm going to start shooting at it first, you know? If I'm coming around from this side and I notice that someone has dropped down into Fight Club over here, then I am going to see if they've noticed me, if they're beelining me. If they're beelining me, then I just pre-fire them. If they're trying to go underneath, then I sneak around over here, see what direction they're heading, and then I try to maybe, you know, pre-fire them where they're trying to head over there instead. So it's not like this is something that you're going to want to keep at all times, because at a certain point, you're committed enough to an engagement that the place your reticle should be is on the player you have to shoot. But this is not a moment where there is one such person here just yet. And during these moments where you're safe, where you have this time to collect information, you want as broad a view of the map as you can possibly get, where it hits as many of the important spots that threaten you as you can possibly see. And that's how you're going to be able to keep yourself safe as you push forward. A lot of people struggle to take all of the information on the screen in and process all of it. You see a lot of players, especially in lower levels of comp, who have information that could have saved them on the screen and they just don't notice it. That's one particular problem. But a lot of people also have the problem that even if they were perfectly aware of everything that's there on their screen, because of the camera angles they're opting in for, they wouldn't notice it because they simply can't possibly see it from that camera angle. So make sure when you're training your awareness that yes, you're keeping an eye on all of the things you can see on your screen. It's very helpful to go back into VOD reviews after the fact and notice the things you didn't notice so that you know what to look for next time. But it's also really important to make sure that you're giving yourself enough of a view to see those things in the first place. So keep your eye, of course, on anything that threatens you, but in the meantime, while you're collecting information, make sure to keep your camera at eye level and taking in as much information about as much of the map as you can so that you get as much information as you can and you can make the best, most informed decisions. Now, one way that you can supplement this collection of vision is with defensive painting. Let's say, for example, that this is later in the game, and so now we're not on the rollout anymore. For all we know, there could actually be someone down there, and we might actually have to check this. If we just walk ourselves out to here without having information about what's in here, but also without having information about what's in mid, now we have a problem because we can't look in both directions that threaten us. It's 180 degrees apart. So what we want to do here is before we ever try to peek this area, we want to confirm that this middle area is going to be safe for the amount of time it's going to take to check this area and deal with whatever's in it. So a way to do that is defensive painting. Defensive painting is basically just creating an amount of time that you can be safe looking someplace else by making the opponent take longer to get to you. So let's say that we're worried about mid. Well, if we paint mid up like so, and let's say we also have a teammate who's up here, because factor your teammate's position into this kind of calculus if there, there's a teammate right here and all of this area is painted up and you'd know that from maybe checking the map or from having you know come down from snipe earlier so you came up here you knew that this was painted you dropped down here and now you want to check the right well if you know all that is painted and you've got a teammate right there you know that worst case scenario if there's an opponent who is trying to push in from this angle they're going to run into your teammate first, and so there are going to be some kinds of signs of a fight from your teammate. They're going to be firing shots. They're going to be getting shot at. One or the other player is going to go down. Those kinds of things are an early warning sign, the canary in the coal mine, that if you're looking over here and all of a sudden you see a, you know, a pink X behind you on the map, you're like, oh crap, 
my teammate just got splatted. I need to look back at that. Um, and that is when you would cut off the angle that a, a player down here would have on you to keep yourself safe from them while you deal with this one thing so that you can deal with this other thing next. So, if you have that buffer, now that makes it safe because you know for the next few seconds nobody from over here is going to mess with you. They're going to mess with your teammate first, if anything. And they're also going to, you know, even if there's someone right there right now, you can't see them super well from here. And they could, you know, what if the top of this is all green? And they're sneaking over this over to, to you, and you can't really see them because of the lip of the ledge. Well, if you've painted the top of this, that's different than if the top of it is, this is green. Because if the top of this is pink, they have to paint over the top of it to get to this area right here. They're not going to just, you know, stand up and walk through enemy ink. And even if they do, then you're going to see them over the top. Well, if they're trying to unpaint this, then as soon as you paint over the top like this, it's going to start getting painted over the top in green. And those shots rise up over the top of this ramp. You'll be able to see them from here. And you'll know that there's someone coming from that direction and that you should stay away from this corner for the time being so you don't get pinched. Another way you could tell, you know, we've got clams on the ground, is if someone's swimming over here and you see this clam get picked up by someone. You're like, oh wait, that clam just vanished. That means there's a scary person right there. I don't like scary people. Get out of here. And so that's another thing that warns you not to just go and peek this and turn your back to mid. Because... There may be someone on the way to come and pinch you in between you and this pit. And you know what? There might not even be anyone down here, but you're still turning your back to them if you turn this way. And that will still make you vulnerable to this person coming from over here. So as you work your way up, especially as something like a frontline weapon, who, you know, you're going to be putting yourself into positions where you're going to have to take a few risks here and there. You're going to have to push into some places that may not be quite as much your color as you would like. Um, you need to be thinking about where are the threats going to come from and what's my early warning sign and how can I get that on my screen. Um, if you can't get it on your screen super well, then you want to at least have maybe some paint in between you and them or a teammate in between you and them so that at least if the teammate gets attacked, then you recognize that really quickly and you turn and maybe try to trade them because maybe that opponent is going to be a little bit weakened having just taken a fight with your teammate and all they need is a shot or two, and then they're going to go down. But even as a backline weapon, even as, you know, a midline weapon, you're still worried about flanks. And especially as a backline weapon, your job is to stay as safe as possible. So it's still, you know, to your advantage to be keeping a very broad view of the map, to be making sure that any place they could come from, you have eyes on. So if you're, a, you know, a charger player, I'm not sure that a charger player would want to be out quite this far, but if you're a charger player and you're up here, you want to make sure you're not getting too distracted by what's going on over here unless you have like a whole bunch of paint or a whole bunch of teammates over on this left side. Because if you get like a 96 gal coming up on the left side here, if you don't have them in your camera angle, you can't see that. And so that's what the defensive paint is for. That's what awareness of your teammates is for. Making sure that you have something in between you and what threatens you if you're going to be looking someplace else. And if you aren't going to have a teammate or paint in between you and that thing, that means... You either need to see it on your screen, or you need to back up just to be safe. Good luck out there, squiddos. Keep your eyes peeled.